You may have learned before that there are just as many even numbers as there are integers. The reason is because you can match them all up like this. By the way, this is called a bijection. And this probably didn't sit right with you, because you can also form a different bijection, and now you have numbers left over, implying that there are more integers. And this probably made more sense to you. So why not? Let's just run with whatever makes more sense intuitively and see if anything interesting comes out of it. Alright, first we need a starting point. Let's say the amount of integers is infinity. Now, can we find the amount of even numbers? You might just say infinity over 2, but let's at least try to make things somewhat rigorous. We can see that the amount of odd numbers is the same as the amount of even numbers, and that both amounts add up to infinity. Therefore, both amounts are infinity over 2. Things make intuitive sense now, but the issue is we can still form this bijection. How do we address this? This bijection implies that infinity equals infinity over 2. Subtract infinity over 2 from both sides, and we get infinity equals 0. There are three ways to resolve this paradox. There are probably more, but these are just the first three that came to mind. First way, we make infinity a new class of number, one that doesn't behave the way numbers usually do. For example, normally you would be able to subtract infinity over 2 and get that infinity equals 0, but let's make it so that you can't do this anymore. You can no longer add or subtract infinities when working with equations, and if we run into any more paradoxes, we can just add more restrictions. Second way, the way you've probably been taught. If you can form a bijection, then you have the same amount of each. No more questions asked. Even if another bijection tells you that one set is larger, it doesn't matter. As long as one bijection exists, they're the same size, and if no bijections exist, they're not the same size. It's as simple as that. We basically just ignore everything over here. And the third way is, instead of ignoring the stuff over here, we ignore the stuff over here. Because be honest with yourself, which one feels more right? This one. This feels way more natural. So let's call this a true bijection. And remember that thing where if you have a bijection, the two sets are the same size, they have the same amount? This now only works for true bijections. So even though this is a bijection, it doesn't count, and infinity does not equal infinity over 2. We can define exactly what a true bijection is later on. Okay, so we have our three ways of resolving the paradox. I think we'll go with the third one. It seems to be the most interesting one. Maybe we'll explore the first option as well in a later video. The second option is the correct one, so we won't go into that. Alright, what is a true bijection? First of all, this is definitely a true bijection. Every number gets matched to itself. It makes the most intuitive sense, and as far as we know, it won't lead to any paradoxes. We also know that this is not a true bijection, because if it were, we would just get the infinity equals infinity over 2 paradox. And we know that this must be a true bijection, because we used this to find out that there were the same amount of even and odd numbers. And without knowing that, it's impossible to find how many even numbers there are. Okay, we have ourselves a start here. True bijections only shift numbers instead of widening them or doing anything else. We can find the number of multiples of 3, multiples of 4, multiples of any integer, really. The number of lattice points in an infinite grid is infinity squared. Again, no problems. What about the number of positive integers? Well, the number of positive integers must equal the number of negative integers, and when you add that to 0, you get 2x plus 1 equals infinity. So there are infinity minus 1 all over 2 positive integers. But you might have noticed a problem. How do we know the amount of positive integers equals the amount of negative integers? This seems pretty obvious, but none of our true bijections help at all. We can't shift the positive integers into the negatives, so we need to add a new true bijection, positive and negative. Positive stuff can form a true bijection with negative stuff, and now that's out of our way. There are infinity minus 1 over 2 positive integers. A bonus result that comes out of this is, infinity is an odd number. If it were even, then this value would be fractional, and you can't have a fractional number of something. Now, how many non-negative integers are there? We can just add 1 to the positive integer count, or we could subtract the negative integer count from infinity. Both give us the same answer. Wow, everything is going wonderfully. And look at that, there's even a third way to find the amount of non-negative integers. We can just do a simple shift bijection, which is a true bijection, so now we know there are the same amount of positive integers as non-negative integers. We have another paradox. Adding an integer has the same effect as a shift bijection. But, adding an integer adds 1 to the count, while shift bijections don't change the count at all. So which one of these is right? Are there more non-negative integers than positive ones, or are there the same amount? There are, again, a few ways to resolve this paradox. The first one I thought of is no more shift bijections. They aren't true bijections anymore. So, there are more non-negative integers, which does make more sense. The problem with this, of course, is that we lose everything that comes with shift bijections, which is a whole lot. The second resolution to this paradox is, sometimes shift bijections are true, and sometimes they're not and we would come up with some sort of criteria for determining this. We could also do the same for other types of bijections. For example, it might be the case that some scenarios would require this to be a true bijection, and we could have some sort of criteria for that as well. 
The third resolution to this paradox is we come up with a better definition of what it means to be equal. Things can be partially equal or they can be truly equal. Partially equal means they are equal in terms of infinity but might not be equal in terms of finite numbers. Truly equal means that they are equal in terms of both. This is the meaning of equal you're used to. But this new definition of equality by itself doesn't solve the paradox. We need to add a new category of bijection. Instead of there just being true bijections and not true bijections, we now also have partial bijections, which are kind of a mix between the two. The difference is that true bijections can help determine truly equal, but partial bijections can only help determine partially equal. So we would downgrade shift bijections to the partial bijection category. So now, using all this new stuff, let's find the size of the non-negative integer set. First, using shift bijections, we can determine that the size of the set is partially equal to the size of the positive integer set. However, the two sizes, or cardinalities, are not truly equal. Using a true bijection like this and adding 1, we can determine that there are infinity plus 1 over 2 non-negative integers. And we don't have a paradox anymore. So here we have our three resolutions to the paradox. Again, of course, there are definitely a lot more of these that I haven't thought of. But out of the three options we do have, I'm going to continue with the third one. This way, shift bijections are still a thing, they've just been downgraded. Let's check how bad the damage is over with the even and odd numbers since they relied heavily on shift bijections. Okay, so before, there were the same amount of even and odd numbers, but now we can only say that the sizes, cardinalities, are partially equal. So the amount of even numbers is not truly equal to infinity over 2, it's only partially equal, and same thing goes for odd numbers, multiples of integers, etc. Side note, the amounts are partially equal to infinity over 2, infinity over 3, but are not necessarily partially equal to each other. For example, the amount of numbers that are congruent to 1 mod 4, or in other words, leave a remainder of 1 when divided by 4, these numbers right here. The amount is half of the odd number count. Exactly half, not partially half. The truly half, I should say. This is because you can use the positive negative bijection, which is keep in mind a true bijection, to get the set of all numbers congruent to 3 mod 4. And the union of these two sets, what you get when you combine them together, is the set of all odd numbers. So therefore, the cardinality of these two sets are both truly equal to half of however many odd numbers there are. But the problem is, of course, we don't know exactly how many odd numbers there are, we only know what it's partially equal to. Okay, that's all I have for you today, I don't want to go too deep into this rabbit hole. So I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.